So the question is, what should you be looking for in a potential wife or a potential husband? How do you know if somebody actually loves God, loves the Lord, is walking in intimacy? How do you know if this person will be a great lifelong partner? You know, these are all things that I think so many Christians and believers in our generation are looking for. And I believe some of these answers today are going to be ones you may have never heard before, but are going to be ones that really give you clarity and peace in your heart. Now is the time for California. Wherever California goes, the entire world will go. What is up, guys? I'm so excited to make this video today because I know I've even asked my me personally some of these questions to mentors and people in my life who I look up to. Like, what in the world should I look for in a wife, right? Or maybe you're on the opposite. And you're like, what in the world do I look for if I'm looking for a husband? Right? And I think there's some really key biblical principles that we can learn. And when we apply these, it really helps give us clarity and peace on our heart when we're on this journey. I can't even expl express to you how many times, you know, people have been in this kind of limbo where they're like, man, should I, you know, a guy's like, should I actually pursue this woman? Or a woman's like, hey, should I actually allow this guy to pursue me? You know, I just, I, I can't tell where's his heart at or how can I trust him? How do I know he's walking with God? And the amazing thing is the word of God is not just an inspiration or a good book. It gives us the design and heart of God on all things so that we can have discernment in our lives through the Holy Spirit and make decisions that not only please God, but are decisions that he has for us. And so I want to I want to just dive right into this. So I hope you're ready. Buckle up. Let's do this. All right. First things first, I want to say this just to lay a foundation here. If you desire marriage, that is an amazing desire to have. And I believe that is a desire from God because marriage is designed by God and was created by him to bring his purposes to the earth. However, this is where we need to safeguard our hearts and safeguard our lives is if marriage becomes an idol or something that we think is going to satisfy us, something that we think is going to bring us this fulfillment that we've never had before, something that's going to help us overcome a specific sin. Any of those things, if, if we place anything, not even marriage, but anything in general before God in our lives, it's a recipe for hurt, pain, and potentially even not walking with the Lord. So I want to make sure our hearts are right and that heart posture comes first, and then we're going to dive into these things. So first things first, let's start with the women, <laughs> right? What what should a woman of God possess? What, what should her life look like? So that as a man of God that I should want to pursue, and I know this is somebody worth pursuing to potentially be married to. And the first scripture I want to start with is actually um, in 1 Timothy chapter 2, and it starts in verse 9. This is actually Paul, and he's talking about worship, but he says, I want women to be modest in their appearance. They should wear decent and appropriate clothing and not draw attention to themselves by the way they fix their hair or wearing gold or pearls or expensive clothes. Now check this out. For women who claim to be devoted to God should make themselves attractive by the good things they do. You know what's crazy about this scripture is this seems to go against every single thing that culture, media, entertainment, arts has thrown at us in my generation and even 30, 40, 50 years back. There's been a, an effort to get us away from the design and the ways of God. And so scripture makes things so clear, which I love. So the first thing is be modest in appearance and wear decent and appropriate clothing. Listen, I'm going to be really honest here. Um, I believe that when it comes to clothing, clothing can really actually show somebody's heart. Now, you might be saying, well, you know, if I wear something and a guy thinks about it one way, you know, that's his own issue. Sure, that may be the case. But I heard somebody say this. It was actually a, a, somebody that I know on social media. Her name is Hannah. And she said that, you know, if you were to walk into the throne room of God, what would you be wearing? If you were literally hanging out with Jesus day by day, what would you be wearing? I mean, it brought conviction even to me. Um, and I believe what the Lord is saying here is for women specifically, and of course this goes for men too, men too, but for women specifically, your outward appearance should not be the most attractive thing about you. Ooh, man, that is a word. Let me say that again. Your outward appearance should not be the most attractive thing about you. What should be the most attractive thing is the good things you do, which actually means your actions, your speech, your relationship with God, how you carry yourself. All those things should be much more valuable when it comes to being a woman of God. Now, here's the thing, fellas, for all my men watching, this also applies because this means if we're interested in a woman or pursuing a woman, if she doesn't have these things, we have no business pursuing her. Because I know men who are like, man, I really want to pursue that woman. And, I, I, and I'm not trying to be mean, but I take one look at her and I'm saying, the, just by the way she dresses and the way she speaks, I don't think that's somebody that you want to be in marriage with or somebody that will help, that will actually grow your relationship with God if you were to get married to that woman. So 
this scripture right here has been really helpful and really clear on giving direction on what a woman of God should look like. All right, let's talk about the fellas now. And all the ladies are excited and ready to hear this. We're going to dive into it. So I heard this sermon by this guy by the name of Vadi Bakum, And he said that men of God or husbands and fathers should have these four Ps. They should be a prophet. They should be a priest. They should be a provider and they should be a protector. Now, I, can't, I don't have time to go into every single scripture, but we even see in the Old Testament when it came to battle, the men are the ones who went to battle and the women stayed behind at home with the children. So that means physical protection. And, and physical protection is just one aspect of protection, right? There's also protection in the midst of what is coming into your house, right? Is there something that your children are dealing with? Is there something that your spouse is struggling with, right? Protection looks like so many different things, but in the context of if you should marry a man, I would say, do you believe this man can actually protect you emotionally, spiritually, physically? Can he do those things, right? Second thing, um, when it comes to being a priest. Now, a priest, like we see in the Old Testament, is one who ministers before God. So what I believe this is saying, or what I believe the, what the Lord is saying is, is this man somebody who comes before God and who hears the heart of God in the secret place? Is this a man of God who you would trust to minister to God for your family. <laughs> Ooh, this is some big shoes. And I'm, uh, um, another one is pre, or sorry, not priest, is a prophet. Now, a prophet is somebody who gets vision or receives words from God and is able to give them to the people of God. Well, in the context of a marriage, it would be that a man who is the head of his household would receive direction and vision for his family. So do you trust that this man who is pursuing you or who you're interested in would be able to hear the voice of God clearly and then be able to communicate that to the family and lead well, <laughs> right? And the last one is provider. There's actually a scripture that it talks about that if a man does not provide for his family, it's worse than being a non-believer. Let that sink in for a sec. So some practicality, he doesn't need to be a millionaire. He doesn't need to make X amount of money, but can he provide? for a future family. All right, so now that I dove into, you know, some things about a man, some things about a woman, obviously there's so much more, right? There's Proverbs 31, there's the epistles, there's, you know, love your wife as Christ loved the church, right? Um, women or, or wives should be submissive to their husbands, right? The, the husband is the head of the relationship, head of the marriage, head of the household, right? There's, there's much more I can get into. I just wanted to hit some points to give you some clarity and practicality. But here are some things that I think, you know, these are what the Holy Spirit has taught me through experience. And I think these are really important because I would say for the most part, you know, most mature believers would know what I just shared through scripture. But there's some things that sometimes are hard to discern or you're not 100% sure on. And I want to dive into that. So some language that I really felt the Lord gave me is I want to pursue somebody and be married to somebody who sees Jesus similarly to me. What does that mean? That means like the language they use, you know, maybe the way they connect to God, maybe the way they like to worship God, maybe the way that they spend time with God, like those types of things are really attractive to me. And so my question is, or something that I want you to ask you, ask yourself, is when you're interested in somebody or want to pursue somebody, do you think that they see Jesus similar, similarly to you? That if you were to do life with them day in and day out, if you were to go through the scriptures with them day in and day out, would they be on the same wavelength with you? And I think that's so crucial because there is different maturities as believers. Paul makes this clear. He says, I couldn't feed you with food. I had to feed you with milk because you were still caught up in your sinful nature. So there is differing levels of maturity in the Lord. And so for me as a man, when I'm pursuing a woman, I wanna see where is her maturity at with God? What language does she use? How does she pursue God? What does her life look like? What is the fruit of her life? These are great questions. Is she leading people to Jesus? Is she discipling people? Is she at a local church? Is she serving people? How does she talk about other people? How does she treat her family? Man, I'm giving you guys all the game today. <laughs> but these are all things that the Holy Spirit has spoken to me. And these are just things that have come together as you look in scripture. You know, God desires healthy families. He desires healthy relationships, healthy children to be successful, to provide. So when you start putting all the connecting these dots together, you can see there's certain things that God really breeds on. And so here's what I want to do. Before we go any further, drop a comment below. If you have questions about a specific scenario, don't, don't name names. I don't name names, but a specific scenario or a specific topic or something in dating. Because here's the reality. You know, dating, I'm, I'm so glad I just said that word, but there is no such thing as dating in the Bible, right? There's actually marriage or you see somebody as your brother or sister. And that's a whole other video. If you want to make that video, just drop the comment below. But if there's any questions, drop them below. There's so much more I could dive into, but I just wanted to kind of tap into the surface 
and give you some really practical tips and questions to ask yourself when someone is pursuing you or you're interested in pursuing somebody. But I want to end with this. Marriage is a beautiful, holy thing. And I believe that God is restoring and wants to restore families in America and in the nations of the earth because families are the birthplace of revival. So I want to put a video up right here that I believe can really help you on your journey and walk with God. Make sure you check that out. And don't forget, subscribe to the channel below so you don't miss any video. Hit, hit the notification bell. So many more amazing videos coming soon. I love you guys. I can't wait to chat.